Hi, Tsurie. I'm wishing Tasty a very happy birthday. I want to share some of my favorite memories and videos to celebrate Tasty's fifth anniversary. I joined Tasty 2016 April, and it was exciting and new. I was hired as a Tasty Japan recipe developer. I was always interested in shooting videos and I was always curious like how it's made. So I was very excited for my new journey. So my first video is a little bit embarrassing, but there is one video I'm still proud of. It went viral. That video is animal shaped eggs for banks. This is my first viral video. I remember when I was little, I enjoyed eating boiled eggs shaped like rabbit. My mom prepared for me. So it's basically you decorate boiled egg and just make it look like rabbit. Just one rabbit, I felt like it was not enough. So I decided to make different shape of animals. So for this video, I made rabbit, hedgehog, owl, and mouse. For the rabbit, I used black sesame and carrot for notes. For the hedgehog, I used straw and used black sesame for the eyes and black whole pepper for the notes. For the owls, I used green olives for the eyes. For the mouse, I used carrot for their ears, black sesame for their eyes, and pink peppercorn for their notes. So this video is very special to me because my mother used to make this rabbit shaped egg for me and maybe in the future I'm going to make one for my son. It was so cool to see a lot of people tagging their friends and saying like, let's make this together. I'm glad to see the video inspired a lot of people and probably that was the first time I realized how powerful food video can be. 2017. By 2017, I was comfortable shooting food videos, but it is my first time being in a video. This video was fried chicken cook-off, and I showed how to make Japanese-style chicken wings called tebasaki. So when you cook fried chicken, I think a lot of people is worried about if it's completely cooked. So the method I showed in the video, it's a double fry. You fry lower temperature first, so you make sure chicken is cooked through, and you raise the temperature so chicken is crispier. So for tebasaki fried chicken, we usually use potato starch to fry. We call karage. For the sauce, I use soy sauce, mirin, sake, sugar, and garlic. So soy sauce, mirin, and sake, I feel like that is holy trinity of Japanese seasoning. So we use it for a lot of dishes. The sauce has a very intense flavor, so you don't need to season actual chicken wings. And I kind of toss with sesame seeds, it's optional, but I think it kind of gives a nice toasty kick to it. Even though I was very nervous on camera, it was very cool experience sharing my recipe I always make at home. 2018 was one of the craziest and busiest year at the Tasty. Another video I'm very proud of was Dumpling Around Asia. So I showed this video for Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. I wanted to showcase dumpling recipes from different cultures. I asked my co-workers to share their own recipes. The first one is Korean mandu. I thought it was interesting because he used tofu for one of his ingredients. And from there, he adds pork, beef, scallions, onion, and kimchi. I think mandu is unique because they put kimchi in it. It has very flavorful and spicy kick to it. It was so different how I make my dumpling, so it was very fun to watch him to make mandu. So next dumpling is made by Lisa and she is Chinese American. I thought this dumpling is very close to how we make Japanese dumpling. She uses Napa cabbage. I think one cool tip from this cooking is sprinkle salt to Napa cabbage so you can extract moisture from Napa cabbage. If you don't do it, it's gonna get very soggy. 
dumpling while you're cooking. So next one is Nepali momo. My coworker Sanjana showed us how to make Nepali momo. I've never had momo before. The interesting part for me was eating with chutney. I thought it was very interesting because she used turmeric, garam masala, and ghee, and she used chutney as a dipping sauce, and it was so delicious. The final dumpling recipe is my own, and this is my mom's recipe. She used a lot of nira chives. The unique way of preparing is, I think, when you fry these dumplings because we make slurry and pour over to make this crispy edge we call hane. It's crispy and it's delicious. I'm so glad to make this video because my mom doesn't use recipe. She just eyeball everything. I had to measure out everything so I can make it same every time. And end of 2018, we shot our very first make it fancy. I thought it was very interesting challenge because I have to think outside of the box and I'm not used to cooking with a lot of rolls so it was very challenging to me. The first episode we made instant ramen fancy and I used my holy trinity sake mirin and soy sauce and I fried the ramen block also, I use everything. I use like seasoning came with it. So I'm pretty proud of what I made. If you are watching Make It Fancy from the beginning, you might remember my hands were shaking because I was very nervous. So the first episode, I created this Make It Fancy dance. Make It Fancy. Make It Fancy. We didn't plan it or anything. It just naturally came to me. <laughs> I feel like Make It Fancy was very catchy title. So I was like, oh, it's like Make It Fancy. At that time, I didn't know it became my signature move. Since then, we made more than 20 Make It Fancy episodes, which is crazy. And because of Make It Fancy, I get to try bunch of ingredients I've never tasted before. I never tried Lunchable, Fruit, you name it. I never try it. <laughs> but I think it's also challenging because those ingredients are new to me. I'm excited to make more new episodes. 2019, I started making more YouTube video instead of recipe video. And I started making more documentary style video, like how it's made. We visited Mexicali and Chef Estoras, he showed us how to make al pastor. I never knew how to make the trombo like al pastor and it was really cool to see. Also I went to beekeeper's house and I shot how honey is made. I didn't know how honey was made and um, it was really fun to learn new information. So one of my favorite show on Tasty is I Draw You Cook. I've been in a lot of episodes and it's always fun to work with kids and make their crazy, amazing imagination to real life dish. One of my favorite episodes is fairy episode. Linden was very energetic and she was so much fun. She drew shooting stars and she wanted something powerful. So I put pop rocks in a dessert. So I wasn't sure she had pop rocks before. What are those noises in my head? It. She had a quite cute reaction. One thing really cool about this episode, I get to compete against Alex, hashtag Relix. She's my BFF. It's always fun to cook with her. 2020, I started producing this video series called Recipe Exchange Student, where I teach my recipe in Japanese. Alright, you're gonna need to slow down on that one. <laughs> also, like my co-worker teach me their recipe in their language. Póngalo en cinco por ahorita. Cinco, uno, dos, tres, siete, cinco. Perfect. Five. <laughs> I really like this series, especially the one I shot with Alex. I tried to teach Alex how to make inari sushi, which is one of the popular style sushi in Japan. So recipe is a little bit complicated to begin with, and on top of that, 
you have to teach her in Japanese, so it is very challenging, but she did a great job and we made juicy inarizushi. So it's a quite challenge, but cooking is its own language. So, and also they do a lot of body language. It's super fun to learn other cultures, cuisine, and the food is so good. I think one of the coolest thing about Tasty is we are showcasing a lot of different culture and cuisine and audience can learn recipes from all over the world. I think that is really cool. Again, happy birthday Tasty! It's been a great five years and I'm excited to many more happy years to come. Oh yes!